It is time for our class act where we feature SoCal schools and what makes them unique. Today we're taking you to the number one public high school in all of California according to U.S. News and World Report. KCAL News reporter Jasmine Veal is live at Riverside STEM Academy to show us around this morning. I can't wait for this, Jazz. Yeah, I can't either. So I'm inside their science Olympiad classroom. I'm with the Olympians of science here at the Riverside STEM Academy, and I can see why they have been ranked number one uh, because of their engineering, their mathematics, their technology, their science focus. OK, so I have Tom here and he's going to walk us through uh, this competition series you have and the four different branches of it. But let's start with whatever this thing is called over here. It's about to launch. Do we do a countdown? Sure. Okay, Tom, I'm ready. Ready, Emmanuel? Yes, I'm ready. So we'll be launching this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, He's going to be launching it as he gets it set up. We've our, um, Armando, my photographer, is going to stay clear. T Tom, tell me how this works. So this is an event called Air Trajectory. So he's going to try and... Um, he has to try and uh, launch that ball to a specific distance. I think he's already set it up. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. There we go. Ready. Okay. Right. Three, two... two one. Launch. Oh. Did it work? And there it goes. He said perfect. <laughs> Yay! Round of applause. Good job. Over here, we have everyone studying very hard, and this varies. You just had a competition on Saturday. You don't get yeah. the results until mm -hmm. Friday, I think. But yeah. what are they doing here? So these are different study events. This event right here is fossils. So they'll be looking to be able to identify fossils, say certain things about them, uh, when asked a question and over there is entomology. So I'm in that event as well. Oh, um, all about the bugs. What are your favorites so far? Um, stag beetles, especially and like Hercules beetles. Stag beetles. Those look big. Yes. <laughs> okay, Tom, walk me over here. Uh, we have the robots. This is just my favorite when I visited schools with class act. Oh, look at this. It's almost it's, like a, a race car hybrid or something. This is electric vehicle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, you ready? So walk you up, yeah. walk me through it. Mm -hmm. this, oh, go ahead. Sorry. So this, oh, go ahead. Basically, we have to get a robot to a specific point between 7 and 10 meters as quickly as possible. So this should hopefully get to 7.25 meters. Hopefully is the word. Let's see. Here we go, Tom. Yeah. Three, two, one. It's rolling. Did it pass the mark? Oh, did it do it? It looks to be right at the mark. Yay! <laughs> it made it right at the mark, running on batteries, so the electric. Yeah. Here, we have someone very carefully laying out uh, the bridges, you said, towers this that cannot tower. break. Mm -hmm. So what they're trying to do is create a tower, usually out of balsa wood, that's going to be as light as possible, but also holds a huge amount of weight. So it holds an, almost an entire bucket full of sand. Wow. So And it's really impressive how much these towers can hold. I failed at my tooth pick bridge in elementary <laughs> school so I'm very impressed with this, this. is like advanced to pick <laughs> <Yeah>. bridge <laughs> exactly and this is why you did so well uh, are you going to demonstrate or no, we don't want to break this no. yet okay yeah, it, it but takes a while. we'll go over here Tom this is why you did so well last year in regional one final look we have one final project mm -hmm. last year you placed second in regional congratulations mm -hmm. yeah. all right really quickly tell me about this and then we got to send it back so this is helicopter so um uh, yeah, are you guys planning on doing yeah. a demonstration no. Okay. Not a demonstration. That's okay, but okay. this is a helicopter like the wind turbine. Can we go over there? You guys ready with that one? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. We'd love to see the demonstration to show off all your hard work here at the Riverside STEM Academy. Okay, okay. what is this? So do? this is the event called wind. So what they're trying to do is make a, the most effective turbine possible. So they can test different, they've got it attached to a CD there, and they can test different uh, turbines. Nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tom, so much for the tour. I love it. No we still have to check out the band here. We're going to go into engineering. Uh, so much to show you here in Riverside. I mean, this is really a standout school here in the IE with these amazing students. By the way, this is an after-school club, uh, Jamie and Ruta Bay. So, I mean, they fit it in, I think, two days a week during the school. But these kids are so dedicated and ready to compete and show off their knowledge. I mean, it's the joy of discovery, they say here. I'll send it back to you. Oh, I, I get why that. they're number one. Yes, but a everything from smart. Stag Beatles, yep. the yes. race cars. I mean, they <laughs> do it all there. <laughs> uh, nice to meet them. Just thank that. you. <laughs> <laughs> and it is Monday, which means it's time for our Class Act series. Our Jasmine Beal is joining us live from Riverside STEM Academy to give us a preview this morning. Good morning, Jazz. 
Good morning, and I am here inside the multi-purpose room with the amazing, I've been listening to them play, the amazing Riverside STEM Academy High School Band. <laughs> Hi, everyone. We're going to give you a little taste of what they have with their Teacher of the Year last year, Chris Watts. It is so fun to watch you conduct. You say attack, trumpets, drum, <laughs> flute. It's a, so impressive. What are you going to play for us? Uh, this piece of music is called Heart of Gold, and it was dedicated to Paul Sawyers, who was one of our... Uh, music directors who founded the Frank Augustus Miller band program when it opened, and uh, we had a piece commissioned in his honor. We Take it away. Okay. Thank you. Take it away. Watch these students, ninth through twelfth graders. And look at Chris, he's so good. <laughs> you know, I could listen to this all morning. We'll have more for you guys coming up. <laughs> well, that so is one way to wake up. I yes. know, so much talent in one room there. And today we are taking you to the number one public high school in all of California. That's according to U.S. News and World Report. KCAL News reporter Jasmine Beal is live at Riverside STEM Academy to show us around this morning. This is a big distinction. Yeah, it is. And you can see why with everything that is going on on this campus. So now I'm inside the high school civics and capstone class. This is where these students have been working on these projects for years to prepare them for a STEM career, college admissions, uh, scholarships. I'm going to give you a look at some of these. This is drummer Joaquin. What do you have here? So I'm working on a silent practice pad kit with um, interchangeable pads to help improve the skill building experience of a drummer. This is quite, this is going to get snatched up by an inventor, and you're going to have a patent soon. You're going places. All right, Raleigh, what do you have? Food insecurity. Yes, so last year I focused on engagement, so I was able to work with an organization called Project Food, where we prepared meals and drinks for the homeless. And this year for Capstone, I'm focusing on looking on data on food insecurity here in Riverside. So crunching the data and carrying this on with him after high school, impressive. Thank you, Raleigh, so much. We're, we're looking at the animals now. Here's Tom again. Uh, owls, what do you have? Yeah, so I'm studying silent flight and owls and other birds of prey to figure out uh, which of them have silent flight, which of them don't, and how do they become so silent. Here we go. And Okay, this one, you got to love rats. We're, we're protecting the rats. What, what, <laughs> what is your capstone project? <laughs> Hi, I'm Lorelai, and this is my capstone project on small animal compassion, specifically looking at pet rats. I do mentorship programs, outreach, and fundraising, everything to help pet rats get small animal rights. <laughs> Even pet rats on the uh, computer here. Yes. Rats everywhere. Rats everywhere. <laughs> uh, as we move from rats, a, a, a big turn here to Johanna. What do you have? This is an important important topic is we you know sorry talk about social media and the impact I'm looking at the promotion of eating disorders on social media so basically how they allow this content on their platforms and I'm writing a children's book for the next generation to have that confidence in themselves so impressive and where's Mrs. Murray this is her classroom and all around you have also the words of wisdom from the seniors who have gone on so Miss Murray we have a few seconds just you must be so proud of these students and I what am. they carry on with these capstone projects I am. Yeah, the students work really hard. They work beginning in ninth grade with our Miss West, and they continue that work through junior year with civics. A lot of them have traveled to D.C. and Chicago to, to really work to make a change in our community. Um, and they continue that work with their capstone projects, and it's really important. Well, thank you for letting them show it off. Yeah. I mean, everything from rats to a silent drum set. Joaquin, I'm so impressed with that. I'll send it back to you. Uh, we're going to make our way to robotics coming up next here from the Riverside STEM Academy, uh, live here from Ms. Murray's class. Send it back to you. Ah, uh, so impressive. Yeah, why can't these kids I do? Know. Thank you, Jasmine. Time. All morning we've been highlighting Riverside STEM Academy. Jasmine Veal is there for our class act series. And Jasmine, there's just so much lined up for us this hour. 
<laughs> there really is. And this is a school nestled up against the mountains, the Riverside STEM Academy. And now I've made it into their robotics headquarters. They have a whole robotics club here at the school. This is Santana, the club president. And I want to introduce you to Gary. So this is Gary. He had his first competition this past weekend. I'll tell you how he did in a second, depending on how he does right now. Come on, Gary, you and I, you got to get the ring. Santana on the control. Oh, Gary. Okay. You got the ring. He's got to get it on the goal. Here we go, Santana. Oh, okay. Do we get a round two? Okay, here we go. Hold on. Gary's going to do it again. They had to do it this past weekend. Oh, the bottom one? Okay. They have 14 members, so maybe I'm not one of the practiced 14 members of the club. All right, Gary. You got to get it on the goal. Can we do it? Down slowly, Santana. Drop it in. Hey, that is close enough. We did it, right? This past weekend, really quick, you made it to? We made it to sixth place in the quarterfinals. Okay, and the club is growing up to 14, 15 members. Yes. Okay, more of the robotics club is going to join me in just a few minutes here at the Riverside STEM Academy, uh, one of the many clubs they have here on the campus. I'll send it back to you for now. I'm going to knock this not Very impressive, oh, I, I have to say. I think Gary's just go. having a case of the Mondays there. Yeah. We'll, we'll work Aren't this we out, all? right? <laughs> uh, we did it. Let's we go. Did it. Thank you, Jasmine. Let's go. It's time for our class act where we feature SoCal schools and what makes them special. Today we're taking you to the number one public high school in all of California, according to U.S. News and World Report. KCAL News reporter Jasmine Veal is live at Riverside STEM Academy to show us around this morning. Good morning, Jazz. Oh, you're in a lab coat. Yes, of course. We are in our Riverside STEM Academy lab coats. I'm inside the AP Environmental Science Sustainable Agriculture Lab with Olia and Johara. Going to show me all the different environmental science and the experiments and labs that are taking place. So first up, what do we have? My name is Johara. Yep. And, what do and we my have? name is Olia. Olia and yes. this is our soil evaluation lab. We have seven different unknown soils and are doing tests on three different soil components, sand, silt, and clay. And those results Results will help us hypothesize what the compositions of our unknown soils can be. Very cool. And he's told me sand is the most permeable. Yeah. Good work. Okay. Moving on over here. And I'm going to, oh, they're already at work. Okay. Who's talking about this one? Um, this next part is permeability. We have a known amount of soil in each of these vials. And we time how long it takes for water to run through them to understand how fast the soil gets saturated. So kind of from this step to this step now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To yeah. see uh, his hypothesis. And yeah. Okay. And now you're taking the soil and doing what? Yes. All right. So this next portion of the lab is going to be porosity. And this is essentially where we determine the porosity, which is how much soil can, how much water can be retained in each different soil types. This is extremely important with in our lab because it helps us determine the contents based on the percentage of water that is retained in the soil. Wow. And again, this is AP. You guys have this all figured out. And I'm so proud of the teacher, Dr. Young, for having all of this equipment. You guys are really set up here. And again, this is 5th through 12th. So you guys have been mentors for the younger students here, looking up to you to say, this is what we get to do when we get to high school. Okay, who's talking about this step? Okay, so this next part, we are taking each of our unknown soils and testing them for phosphorus, potassium, nitrogen, and their pH. Mm -hmm. And seeing these amounts of nutrients can better help us understand which soil soils would be best suited for planting which plants. Okay, and last, last step. I know we're running out of time, but here we go. All right, so this last step is going to be the soil sensor coating part. We have a microchip, which is essentially a computer compressed into a really small square. And we were able to code these sensors to detect levels of moisture. And when it reaches a certain low, it is able to water the plant as you can currently see. Huh. This is really important within agriculture because it's basically saying that with certain computer types, you can be able to determine what is a good level of water for soil and what is not to make sure it reaches a good loaf of what's good and what's not. I'm excited to see where you guys are going. She wants to be a lawyer, by the way. Aaliyah wants to go into engineering, right? Yeah. Environmental engineering. Yeah. So just incredible. Uh, Dr. Young, thank you so much. Thank you. Give a shout out to all your students. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> well, you. I love them. Such good work. Thank you so much for coming and sharing. This is like our big family. We love it STEM is. so much. So it is. I, I've well, I seen to. that. Well, we are glad to be here. It is like a family here. And we have the principal. I just got to get, get him to wave really quick. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, what a tour. We have more coming up. I know we're not done. We got to go show off the engineering students next. So we'll send it back to you live here from the Riverside STEM Academy in my uh, lab coat. Let's see if they let me take it home. I'm glad yes. they'll be leading us in the future. Me too. But, but you, for the record, do look very official in that lab coat. Yes, you do. <laughs> for once. For once. <laughs> Thank you, Jasmine. Yes. Story number nine this morning. 
It's our class act and we are hanging out at Riverside STEM Academy. It was recognized as the number one high school in California by U.S. News and World Report. KCON News reporter Jasmine Thiel shows us what makes these scholars shine. OK, so we are now inside the engineering classroom here on the campus of the Riverside STEM Academy, STEM, science, technology, engineering and math. We are in the engineering portion of it all. The students behind me busy working on these prototypes with their teacher, Mr. Moorhead. Let's walk over here and talk about what they are sure. doing, because this is uh, I mean, this takes a lot of uh, science behind to create something. What for animal shelters? Yes. Yeah, so the students are working on an interdisciplinary project with the uh, their uh, English teacher or ELA and in engineering uh, in ELA they're asked to choose a, a current topic that is of concern to them um, and in my classroom they build uh, mechanical prototypes we're calling them allegorical machines. So show us how it works go ahead. Um, so this is to represent dogs and human interaction within the strays and shelters and when you pull it up you can see um, the mechanisms inside we have a feeder over here if you'd come over here turn the handle you can see how it works. We recently uh, just built the mechanism and then this should be a dog that moves around. We have to install the gears on the underside um, and such and such. Nice. Okay. And we're going to weave our way and follow my photographer Armando. But Mr. Moorhead, I mean, we talk about engineering, but like I said, all these components kind of coming together, the English and the science and the technology. Correct. Yes. So it, it's um, a lot of times machines, machines are kind of used to reference the way society works or the things things work so they're kind of asked to like use um, basics from uh, simple machines and mechanical advantage to kind of represent mechanisms within society um, so they're, they're kind of that overlap and taking some uh, even political statements tell me what this is um, this is me and my partners child hunger uh, through a political stance. Child hunger and creating this and then you might take this on to become your capstone into the senior year. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. And carry it forward even after school, after their final year here at Riverside STEM Academy. Uh, over here we have, uh, and here's Orion again, he's also in the high school band. Really quickly tell me about what you're working on. Uh, I'm working on a project for inactivity in the new generations of children. Okay. And it's just in the beginning stages. Yes. Okay, good luck with that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moorhead, so much. Anything you, you want to say? Uh, no, thank you for visiting. <laughs> well, thank you for showing us around. As these students, I mean, we're in the middle of the class, the engineering class right now, and it is so impressive. And the fact that they have fifth grade through 12th grade here, the school founded back in 2011. Um, Caldwell, Principal Mark Caldwell, just uh, wanted to give you uh, just a chance to say something after, you know, we've seen everything from the robotics to the band and now to engineering. Well, thank you for being here. It's been great to have you showcase all the wonderful things that our students are doing. Our students work really hard here. Our teachers work exceptionally hard as well. And that combination really leads to great student work. And we're glad that you were here to showcase it. Thank you so much. The joy of discovery. All right, I'll send it back to you. Reporting here from Riverside, the Riverside STEM Academy, Jasmine VLK Cal News. You see why it's number one. Thanks so much, Jasmine.